Hey guys, my name is Andrew, and uh, I'm the new owner of a beautiful 77 Eleganza here. I uh, wanted to make this video to show everyone how to drop the gas tanks on their coach. It's something that all of them need done. It's something you definitely will want to do for reliability and to help prevent the vapor lock that these are so well known for. So I'm going to get started here and show you guys what it takes to drop both of the uh, 25 gallon tanks and replace the fuel lines on these vehicles. Stay tuned. So if it wasn't obvious, you're gonna have to lift your coach to drop the fuel tanks. Now, I already did it here on mine, but it can be a little bit of, of a pain, especially to do it the right way. The right way is to jack up the rear as evenly as possible on your bogey, right here in between the two wheels. Now this one's a little stiff, but when you jack it up, each of these arms are going to droop and they're gonna pull on your airbag here. So when you jack it up, it's really important to uh, have a ratchet strap or something, or at least keep an eye on this airbag so it doesn't get pulled apart and ruined. Now, I jacked it up using a floor jack and I have it supported here with six ton jack stands. I have two on the rear frame rail here on each side and one up front on the cross member. So some people don't jack the vehicle up and instead drive it up on blocks. That's great. I didn't have that luxury because this vehicle has not been moved in years. I decided to work on it where it sits and jack it up in place. So the first thing I'm going to do is blow out my work area. There's a lot of crud. There's a lot of crap. I don't want it to fall in my eyes. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my blower. creeper. That way you can roll around on your back and makes it a little bit more easy. So the fuel tanks are under the very middle part of the coach. There's two of them. It would be silly to drop one and not the other. So we're going to crawl under there. I'm going to show you guys what to look for and we're going to get some WD-40 or whatever uh, lubricant you have on some of the bolts to make them easier to get off. And I'll show you some tricks for working on these older, crustier, rustier machines. We'll be right back. All right, so we're here on the driver's side of the coach underneath, and we're looking at the front tank. There's a few things you're going to want to take off before you drop it. One of the first is your fuel fill neck right here. It's got a couple hose clamps. There's one of those on each tank. So make sure you remove both of them. Now the actual tank is only held up with these straps. There's a button in the front that holds the strap. And then back here looks like a 9 16 stud mount, stud mount to hold the rear of the strap. So we're going to spray those down with WD 40 before we even touch them. Some of these older bolts are going to come off easy, and others are going to be a major pain. But having the nice clean work area all blown out 
really makes this job a lot less frustrating. So I'm gonna spray down these bolts. Now, something I should add is you want to make sure your tanks are as empty as possible before trying to drop them. I just checked mine and uh, the front one's empty, but the rear one does have some fuel in it. I'll show you now. An easy way to check if you have fuel in the tank is just to hit it with the uh, palm of your hand. So kind of like this. Here, that one's kind of empty sounding. <laughs> Now that's our front tank. Now listen to our rear tank. Hear that liquid? So I can smell the fuel also just from being down here. So that's never a good sign. My lines and everything feel soft on this coach, but I still want to drop the tanks and make sure everything is good so I can count on this thing when I go down the road later this year, so. Let's go ahead and get these straps off these tanks. Now it is a little bit hard to see, but there's a bolt here, here, and here, these three, that hold up the tank as well as the straps. So what I did was I loosened the straps up just so the nut was on the very end, almost ready to come off. And now I'm coming up here and I'm breaking loose all three of these. Break loose all three of them before you take any one out. That way it won't be too much, um, too hard to get one over the other. So if they have trouble coming out, you can use your spray, your WD-40, your PB blaster, or tighten it a little bit, then loosen it, tighten it, then loosen it, and work it back and forth. That helps out a lot. Let's see if I can get the camera on this for you. That one's really tight. Let's try this other one. Remember, there's no rush to get the job done. The coach is how old? If you get frustrated, it's always okay to just walk away, take a break, crack a beer, do something. See that? Gave it a minute, and now it comes right off. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen up the other strap and this tank's gonna come down. You're gonna wanna use a jack or something if you're doing this by yourself. I am actually gonna use a ratchet strap and I'll show you how to hook that up here. But I'm thinking just one strap right up the middle, hanging off the frame rail. So let me show you how to do that. So I got nothing crazy here. I got a Harbor Freight ratchet strap running all the way down. Straight up the middle, I got some WD-40, and I'm just going to spray these bolts a little more. I haven't sprayed them yet. So, I loosened up the elbow here. You can get at the hose clamp through the top. And the actual fuel lines will be accessible once the tank is down. So let's see if we can capture that process here.
have it. Fell right out. Now what I like to do is re-thread the bolts into their respective holes to make sure that nothing gets lost. So let's see what our few lines look like here. So I'm looking in here from the passenger side of the coach, right underneath the door. And here we go. You can see our vent line, our sender back there. And there's not much tension on these hoses actually. No tension at all. So even though it dropped pretty, pretty fast there, we didn't damage anything. So now all we got to do is get these lines off and get this tank all the way down and out of the way to start on the back one. So we got our vent line off. Your hose clamp might be a weird position. You might need a stubby screwdriver or something, but what I ended up doing was loosening it with the screwdriver straight up here. And then I was able to spin it around and come at it from the side. Now, if you have a problem getting the hose off, what you can do is grab it and just twist it back and forth to break the seal to get off the actual line. So I can smell the old gas already. And uh, I'm going to head on over now to the driver's side again to get the rest of the filler hose off. So let's go over there. All right. So... There's not a whole lot of room over here to work. And I decided I'm gonna try to lower the tank down a little more with the strap and then push it towards the passenger side. And I already have the hose clamps loose and that tube is gonna come off pretty easy, I think. So what I'll do is carefully lower this. I'm gonna make sure I have no appendages underneath it. All right. There we go. I shoved it off. You can hear the fuel in there. It's all on that side. Now we just need to get off on top here these two actual feed and return hoses so bear with me here looks like i dented the corner up a little bit when it hit the ground but not too worried about that i can use a pair of pliers or something to get it back into shape now luckily my coach is not rusty at all so this has been pretty easy but you may not be so lucky so again if you don't know the last time this was done, it's highly recommended. Um, the fuel lines may or may not be rated for ethanol, which is in all the gasoline readily available these days. And last thing you want is a fire or fuel starvation or any fuel related problem is gonna put you dead in the water. You do not want a fuel problem. You do not want to break down or be on the side of the road. So, I'm going to loosen up these lines. We'll probably put it in fast forward motion here. There you go, nice and gentle. On top of the tank, there's zip ties and stuff on mine holding the wire harness to the fuel lines. You're gonna want to cut those and get everything free. 
before you actually let the tank fall all the way. My tank's, the one corner right now is being held up on the other side out of the camera's sight right now. But you want to make sure you're not holding the tank up with just wires or fuel lines. You're going to break something. So. All right. So here's the front tank. This is going to give you a better idea of what's up underneath there where you can't see without a flashlight. So there is where the gas enters the tank. And that is an inch and an eighth diameter, I believe. All of the GMC supply chain people can get these parts. This here is our pickup and our return. I didn't mark which one's which, but I'm not too worried about it. We'll show you in a little bit how to take this sender assembly off. But if you struggle with the wiring harness like me, this one's a spade terminal and it's um, soldered to the base. And the other one is just a round little titty that you pull the wire straight off of with a pair of pliers or a screwdriver as kind of a pry bar. It'll come off, so. The tank I'd say is about 75 pounds. It's definitely a little awkward to move, but I was able to slide it out by myself and then get it up on its edge like this and shimmy it to the side of the coach. So, I did spill a little gas, that's because it wasn't completely empty, but it was close. It was sloshing out of the neck here. So that's one thing to be careful about. Now it's time to do the uh, rear tank. So let's have at it.
So that worked out really nicely, but I did spill a lot of gas. <coughs> These tanks have a um, drain plug, but my professional advice is to not even mess with the drain plug. They are probably frozen in place and you can't really use heat or nothing because you're working around gas. So what I'm going to do is exactly what I just showed, slowly lowering it down. I'm gonna put a drain pan underneath there and we're gonna get that gas mopped up. But so far so good. I'm really happy with how this is going. Um, mine coach is in great condition. I'm really happy here. Um, this is going to be a snap. I didn't cut any fuel lines, didn't cut any wire, and uh, they actually made this pretty easy to do. So if you are a first-time wrencher, if you haven't done anything like this before, I would say don't be too afraid. You can definitely do this. The only tools we've used so far are a slot and screwdriver, a 9 16 deep socket, with a 3 eighths ratchet and a ratchet strap and a pair of dykes or electrical pliers is what I have here but anything I cut those zip ties with so I'm gonna go grab a drain pan and uh, we'll get the second tank out from underneath here all right so what I did was first I rotated the elbow the face upwards so that when I get it on the ground, the fuel will have a high point up here to not be able to drip out. So I just loosened this up, reclocked it, tightened it back down. <laughs> my propane, uh, I'm sorry, my generator fuel line, I cut as close to the source as possible to not interfere with the length of the new one. And I did that as well with the vent line. Um, I'm replacing all the rubber hoses anyways, so I really didn't see it being a problem doing it that way. Makes it a lot easier since I don't have a stubby screwdriver available. And in the future, I'm definitely going to clock the hose clamps a little bit differently than whoever was in here last time. So, got all of everything um, disconnected. So now the tank is free to come down so I'm gonna wrestle it out from underneath here and we'll do a little comparison between the front tank and the rear tank once I get it out so one minute so here's both the tanks got the front tank behind here right here and our rear tank easily identifiable by the generator fuel pickup here in the corner Otherwise, pretty similar. A little dirty, not bad though. We got both our tanks out. My plan is to pop off the senders, power wash them, clean them up, paint them, and reinstall them with new lines and everything. That'll be another video, but this is how to remove the tanks from your GMC. T-Z-E coach. Well guys, there we have it. I'm a little dirty, but I'm in one piece. I spilled a little bit of gas, but it's not a big deal. Um, as long as you're not smoking, making sparks with a hammer or banging on stuff, you should be fine. I always recommend having a fire extinguisher handy and disconnecting your battery in this case, the battery's dead, and uh, like I said, a little bit of gas getting spilt. As long as you're being smart, you should be fine. I wrenched on this for an hour and a half, 90 minutes, and, you know, a lot of that time was setting up the camera too. So, you know, for what it's worth, if you've never really turned wrenches much, I think this could be done in under two hours. I really could. We used a 9 16 deep socket, an extension, a 3 8 long handle ratchet, a flat head screwdriver, and a cheap ratchet strap. And we got those down without bashing our fingers or anything like that. Um, I used WD-40. You probably could have done it without it. 
PB Blaster is another great alternative. I just had the WD-40 on hand. So an hour and a half, here we are, got the tanks out. Um, but mine look pretty good inside. I'm not going to uh, work on it here until probably tomorrow. I'm gonna call it a wrap for today, but really not that hard, guys. And the best part about this job is between the new elbows, the new fuel hoses, the new sender O-rings, and if you need senders, that's a little more, but I'd say without the senders, even with painting the tanks, you're looking at under $150. If you need the senders, you're looking at around 500, and the labor isn't really that bad. I'm gonna have probably six to eight hours wrapped up in this by the end of it after I paint everything and run the new hoses up to the engine. So in my case, I'm doing the whole fuel system with a new selector valve as well. And I got a trick idea for a little fuel cooler to help uh, mitigate the vapor lock problems that these coaches are known for. So we're in one piece, we're a little dirty, but we got the job done and it's really not that hard, guys. Um, stay tuned. We're gonna get another video of the tanks going back in the coach for everyone to see how that is done. So thank you so much. My name's Andrew.